Now guys, yes, overclocking more is actually very often gonna result in worse performance. Now this seems like a counterintuitive thing, but it's actually the truth. And I think there are a couple of things that need to be explained, especially since I am starting to make really a lot of tutorials about overclocking, undervolting, and I try to keep them short. As you can see, under three minutes, under five minutes if needed. But I think a more in-depth video is needed. So I will put this in the undervolting and overclocking playlist. So if people want to ask me more questions, they can just go in there in this video, well, and just uh, learn the more in-depth stuff. So let's start from this simple thing, which not many people know at all. One person, after they understand how overclocking works, so you just increase the megahertz and maybe increase the voltage to go with it, and you find a stable point, people think the highest my megahertz overclock, the better. So for example, if my overclocking uh, videos, I do recommend like on 3000 series cards, on average, a memory offset of like plus 1000, some people just write, I did manage to get plus 1500. So now why don't I recommend higher memory overclocks? Because on most cards you can actually get um, to input plus 1500 in MSI Afterburner, you can start your game and the game will play fine. Well, it is because if you actually go ahead and measure your performance, you will see that the performance is actually lower very often. And now why is that? Well, that's because of two main things. One thing is called ECC, so basically it's the error correction, which is built in those latest cards. So what happens is the card is not really stable at that frequency, but it is so slightly unstable that it automatically corrects the mistake. This happens with the 4090, like the ones I have here behind me, but it also happens just with a normal 4060. So you need to be aware of this. You always need, when overclocking, to double check your numbers with a benchmark and with a game. If possible, two or three different games or benchmarks that test different things. In my videos, I always use Trademark Fire Strike, and I recommend that for you. And I also recommend you just pick one game that you play and just test in there, you know? Now, this is just the most simple, the most evident reason of this behavior, but there are actually more. So remember, clocks are always tied to voltages. So what happens is to get a higher clock, you will need to get a higher voltage, just in a very simple way. If you go in Afterburner again and just unlock the slider, of the voltage, you will get uh, the maximum percentage of voltage, not an actual increase, but you will get effectively more voltage on your card, okay? Especially if you have an older card. This will make you reach the power limit and temperature limits, which are inbuilt at a BIOS level inside your card quicker. So what happens is you get a higher clock, the clock runs, the clock is stable, so we are not encountering the previous issue, However, the clock is not sustained and the card maybe with the higher voltage is actually running slower than at stock. So you effectively don't clock your card and overvolted it at the same time. This is why it's so important to actually dial in the settings properly. And this is why for modern cards with the boosting behavior, with how they work, I always and only recommend you undervolt them unless you have them under liquid cooling, pretty much. Because that way you can just make sure that your voltage point is just flat, stable all the time, and it's what I do in my tutorials. It's also why I focus so much on repasting and repadding your card with new thermal paste, new thermal pads. And again, if you are seeing this video because you're looking for more performance on your GPU, please go watch my repaste and repad video. I think it's crucial for you guys. And if you are thinking of doing stuff to your CPU as well, you should try to increase the cooling in some way. Could be a better cooler, could be a better paste. I do have reviews of cooler, reviews of paste on the channel. Could be putting a copper IHS instead of your IHS, could be using liquid metals. There are many ways, but the main thing you want is to get lower temperature. This will also increase the life of your components. You don't want stuff running with high degrees, literally ever, unless you're running it at stock and you're doing it in a very small SFF system. You absolutely wanna pay attention to those things. So those were just a few simple things and what you can take from this is basically focus on cooling and triple check that your numbers are working because just because they are working doesn't mean they are benefiting you and your performance. So be sure to double check that. And if this video was helpful, please drop a like and a sub. 
And again, I surely have a tutorial for your CPU and for your GPU on the channel. And we do budget bills, which we undervolt and overclock all the time on the channel. So you might wanna drop a sub to stick around to see that, okay? Thank you guys and see you in the next one. Bye.